Good evening. Before we begin, just a reminder to please silence your cell phones, but feel free to take as many photos as you like. This will be posted online after the wedding. Greet each of you in Jesus' name. We're here to witness the marriage of Eric Butler and Anna Tendergrass. And we want to especially acknowledge the presence of parents and grandparents and family and friends. And I'm going to begin reading from Genesis 1, verse 1 of the Bible, the first day of creation. In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God began creating day one the light, day two, three, four, five. God divided lands and seas, and He made grass and trees, and fish and birds. Then on day six of creation, now take a journey with me and envision with me. Day six, the sun is just cresting the horizon of Eden and the breeze is rustling the leaves, the birds are singing and the dew is lying on the grass. And it's this day God makes the land animals and next God says, let us, and that's the mighty trinity, make man in our image god said in our likeness and chapter 2 verse 7 of genesis says and the lord god formed man of the dust of the ground and here i'm picturing a moment when creation is very still now and the breeze stops and the birds hush their singing and the Lord God bends over the man that he has just created here on the earth. And Genesis 2, 7 says, Breathes into his nostrils the breath of life, and man becomes a living soul. 
human eyes open for the first time. And this man stands up and, and looks about. It probably looked somewhat like, like here. And Genesis 2, 19 and 20 tells us that God brought every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and every living creature, he brought them by Adam for Adam to give them names. And whatever name God, Adam gave them, that was their name. But verse 20 ends, but for Adam, there was not found and help meet for him. So ponder what must have been impressed upon the mind of Adam when all the animals and creatures pass by him. Two and two and two and two. They all pass by Adam. And Adam started to realize that they were all by and there was not another like him on the earth. He was the only one of his race and he stood there alone. And I think the Lord was preparing him for something. I'm going to read on here. And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And he slept and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. Like kind, like race. And if there are indeed moments, like we mentioned, when creation pauses and is very still and the very elements of creation heart to something that God is doing. This moment when man, when Adam first beheld Eve coming to him now, would certainly be one of them, wouldn't it? I would say it would be. And Adam, as he first looked on Eve, now here was one of his own kind. He said this, this is now bone of my bones, and flesh of my flesh, and now he names her. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. And it's interesting that woman contains the, the word man in it. And it's the same in the Hebrew. Isha is the Hebrew word for woman, and ish is man. And that's, that's by divine purpose. And Adam was not alone anymore now. Fast forward some 6,000 plus years to 2023, 2880 Horse Creek Road. That's this address where we are, 2880 Horse Creek Road. And I have it memorized because I send a lot of mail to, to Dave at times. <laughs> <laughs> so Eric Butler and Anna Tendergrass are standing here before us but consider this, Eric is not yet Anna's husband. And Anna is not yet Eric's wife. And such, I believe, was the condition in verse 22, which we read, when the Lord God brought Eve unto the man Adam. One man on earth and one woman, and here they stand, the only two on earth, Adam and Eve, but they were not yet married at this point. He was beholding her, she was beholding him, but they weren't married. And remember how we said that when he first looked on Eve, he said, this is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. And in the next verse, Adam says, therefore, because of this, she's bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh, therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they the two of them shall be one flesh and in mark 10 jesus restates these same words and jesus says in mark 10 but from the beginning of the creation god made them male and female for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife 
and they twain shall be one flesh. So then they are no more twain, but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. Marriage is a perfect plan for the human race. It's a perfect plan. And we enter into marriage as uh, imperfect people into God's perfect plan. And we acknowledge here that marriage is not God's plan for everyone. Those who live singly can find ultimate fulfillment in God's plan for them. But God has made Anna, according to the scripture we read, where it said, I will make him and help meet for him, suitable for him. God has made Anna a wife suitable suitable for Eric completely. And Eve, as taken from Adam's rib, possessed the identical moral and spiritual properties of, of Adam, as taken from Adam's rib. And she was neither superior nor inferior to him in any way. They were equals before God. But God gave them different roles. We see that in Scripture. But neither role is superior or inferior to any other of them, but they're different. Eric is commanded in the scripture to provide and lead, and Anna is to be a homemaker and guider of the house and helper of Eric. And each of them in their marriage will find their greatest fulfillment as they embrace the roles that God has given to them in his word. For you, Anna, abandon yourself to be Eric's helper, his confidant, his wife. Just abandon yourself to that. The scriptures have declared that you are created completely adequate for them. A hundred percent. And you need to see yourself as such in the Lord, completely adequate for Eric. And the etymology of that word need for him is suitable for him corresponding to him, like him by creation, adequate in every way. And you with joy can be the one, and now I'm speaking to, to wives, this applies, but especially we're speaking to Anna, you with joy can be the one who, who packs his lunch in the morning and listens to his struggles and listens to his aspirations for life. Uh, Ephesians 5 says, you're to reverence Him. With, with joy you can reverence Him and encourage Him. And at times, even share hard things with Eric. Uh, things that will help grow his character. But you share them in love and care and respect. And Eric, I want to say, the Scripture says, the man is a husband worthy of honor. A husband worthy of honor. And the Bible says, husbands, love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. And the scriptures commanded you, Eric, to love her and, and to, uh, to cherish her, even as Christ loved the church. And in this scripture, it's interesting that there's, there are no contingencies or caveats in that verse. It just says, Eric, you love her as Christ loved the church, always, regardless, no matter what happens, you just love Anna as Christ loved the church. And that's a complete and a perfect love that will just flow from you to her. And you want to develop a sensitive spirit to her. She needs that from you. Now, thinking of a sensitive spirit, she needs, uh, you need from Anna what a sensitive spirit in you will open her heart to share with you. And God gives you a treasure here today, a real treasure. And in the treasure that God is giving you here in Anna, you want to, as you go forward, unfold the petals of this beautiful rose very carefully. Unfold the petals carefully. But be certain that you do unfold them in the Lord. And your sensitivity to her should develop more and more as the years go by, not decrease. 
you become more and more sensitive after 16 years of marriage or on, you are you, you think more alike and you love her more and you care for her more and, and the rose continues to unfold. And I like to think of it this way, your sensitivity and love will increase by reason of you and not decrease because the exercise thereof of those things. And your home, Eric, will be mostly what you need it to be. And you must be an example yourself and lead your home, your wife forward in the fear of the Lord each day and take time for her. And this gets very practical. When I was preparing some of these very thoughts that I'm sharing here today, I sat down one evening and was starting to meditate on these thoughts and, and all of a sudden, and I was feeling a bit of urgency to, to get these thoughts together. And here came Jenny with a story to tell. And, and I thought, okay, Jenny, I'll, and Jennifer is my wife. And I'm, I'm speaking loudly because I'm hoping those people over by the stone house can hear me. And I thought, I'll listen to this story, but then I need to get on with things. So Jenny told me the story she had. And then when the story was finished, Jenny says, let's have some family time. And please listen, Stan, will you stay here and listen while I read to the children? And when the story to the children was done, well, needless to say, I didn't get any studying done that evening. And, and uh, that was okay, because of course, and of course, we cannot always be having family time. However, we as husbands need to evaluate the tendency of our choices and we as husbands need to see that our choices do not trend the wrong way in these matters. They need to trend toward time together and quality time spent together and, and never to diminish in that. So Eric, you want to make sure that the daily structure of your home, and we're starting to think day to day now, is such that it pre provides time for you to nurture your wife daily nurture her and you need to care for her and and build up your wife and your family if, if the lord chooses to bless you with a family eric you want to be a man whose hands are are familiar with the word of god that this is a familiar book in your hands and you want to set it as a goal to wear out the pages of your Bible. And when, when those pages are worn out, then you get another Bible and, and start working on that Bible as well. And also, you want to be a man of prayer and lead your family daily in a time of prayer. God gave a command to the king of Israel to write a whole copy of the law and read in there daily. And that's very good for us to do. Read a scripture together and, and teach from the Word of God. Also now, as we bring this lead toward a conclusion, the Apostle says in his walk with God, he says it this way, not as though I had already attained. He says, I haven't attained to everything, the Apostle says. Either we're already perfect, but... I follow after, that's Christ, that I might apprehend, and that means take hold, of that also for which I am apprehended of in Christ Jesus. That means Christ Jesus has laid his hand on your shoulder, both of you, and he's taken hold of you for a purpose. I have a purpose for you. Now, he said, you follow after me, that you can take hold of that purpose for which he, Christ Jesus, has taken hold of you for. And those are magnificent words, and that's a magnificent cause that the Lord Jesus puts, puts in front of us. And how do we do this? We must yield our lives completely to Christ. He's first. He's your Lord and your God. Christ is first. Next, we confess our sins and repent of them. And the Bible says, when we do that and choose Him as Lord and surrender, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 
by faith when we believe that. Then the scripture teaches us we're a clean vessel. Our sins are washed out by the blood. Now what? We're a suitable habitation for the Holy Spirit to come into that clean vessel and to live abundantly and then overflow with the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, gentleness. And the Bible says, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. That's through Christ, the Holy Spirit coming in and overwhelmingly flowing out to those around us. And that can be a reality for you too in your marriage as you walk with God each day in your marriage. So now I would like to exhort you at the onset of your marriage, Eric and Anna, keep your eyes on the Lord and the building of His kingdom. Make many decisions for God day after day. A good marriage is not built on one decision. It starts with a main decision, but then it's built with many decisions for the Lord, for each other, day after day. And the marriage covenant is a very exclusive covenant. This covenant you're making today before God, and God recognizes it, but this covenant today includes only you two. Just like Adam and Eve, they stood alone on the world and covenanted in marriage. And in this exclusive covenant of marriage, you never consider another person or any other pathway of life. You only consider you two together. On and on you walk, together. And you today, as you covenant before God, it involves sharing the joys and sorrows of life together, both. It involves, uh, in times of health and in times of sickness, in prosperity and adversity, all these kinds of times. And to keep yourselves only for each other until death do us part. It involves this. So God has chosen a pathway for each of us to follow, a pathway of light and a pathway of light for Eric and Anna to travel in. Always choose the light that God shines before you through His Word and through people and many other ways through His Spirit. Always choose the light and He will continue le leading you on continually to a greater light. God bless you. Thank you, Stan, for that beautiful message. We are now going to sing a couple of hymns that are on the sheet music provided. Please feel free to sing with us if you would like. <laughs>
good times and in bad. In good times and in bad. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to honor you all the days of my life. To love and to honor you all the days of my life. And to dedicate our marriage. And to dedicate our marriage. To serving and glorifying God. To serving and glorifying God. May have the living place. Eric and Anna's rings are an external and visible sign of the internal and spiritual bond in which love unites these two hearts. May they serve as a tangible expression of the vow Eric and Anna have made to one another. Please repeat after me. Eric and Anna, what I wish for you on this wedding day is that your life together as a team is one of complete success, full of those moments that you wish would never end, and that you continue to make one another smile and laugh. Remember to have grace with one another through the challenges you will face, and always encourage and uplift each other with love. In the sight of God, Thank you. 